Welcome to Sleepless in St. Canard, where nostalgia replaces REM cycles. I'm Kitty. And I'm Ange. We haven't slept. In 30 years. This is a podcast about the 90s Disney cartoon Darkwing Duck, but enough about him. Enough! Because before we get into anything regarding the 90s, there is big, horrible, stinky, wonderful news that I know that Ange is bursting to talk about. So Ange, burst. Tell us, tell us, tell us what's going on. Everything's coming up, Negaduck, baby! Hey. <laughs> like, a lot. A lot of Negaduck. He's the bad penny that keeps burning up. I, I don't even know where to start, because even before we were planning on recording this, I was going to talk about some of the news, and then even more news popped up today, so it's just been <laughs> basically... Yeah. Yeah. Sewerage, sewage tidal wave of Negaduck news. Yeah, let me let me set the scene here for how how wonderful a week it has been for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was and has been feasting all week. I had mentioned in our last episode that I was going to be on vacation, so I should be on vacation right now, and I am not. I was all ready to go, and then I decided to curse myself by eating vegetable dip that I guess was not good because I got food poisoning. Yay! You got dipped. I got dipped, and it was bad. So that's why I'm not there. But as a result of that, I was very miserable. I had to stay home. And I'm just like, man, this week is going to suck. And in that span of time, let me list off. You you summoned him. Your misery summoned him to this realm. It, it really did. So to start off, there was first they released some previews of it was one of the merchandise figures. I can't even remember which company is doing it. Did you see that with the smiley face Negaduck? I think my response was woof. Yeah, as usual. I'm very <laughs> I'm so picky when it comes to any of the merchandise where it's three-dimensional i find the tra- yeah the translation of the face the facial features mm. for both both darkwing and negaduck i find very rarely does any company seem to get them looking proper i think the closest is those little uh figurines of them on the gargoyles mm. i think are probably the best looking and ironically aren't even that expensive because they're made of some kind of i don't know plastic so the price is really great but a lot of these other things that keep coming out are like ridiculous amounts of money it's like coming out 60 dollars usd and it's like uh, i can't justify the cost it feels as if they are in a competition with each other to make the ugliest merchandise possible and i saw i remember the artist posting a preview of the negaduck drawings like the 2d concept drawings and they looked good so i think it's just the translation however they do it i assume they translate it over into a 3d model and then they have to i don't know what 3d print it and then make a mold out of it sure it's all witchcraft to me it's all witchcraft so the point is is that is coming out it's a negaduck and darkwing i think they're sold together but yeah yeah their hats don't fit on their heads so you see, like a little bit of like the white feathers, yes, popping out. It's just, it's just, mm, nah. Moving up the line, I'm gonna go from like, <laughs> you know, mediocre to best announcements. <laughs> there was the um, the lounge fly Negaduck bag was released recently as well. There was already a Darkwing Duck one where it's his face. Mm-hmm. If you've seen that. Those are like a hundred dollars Canadian, so I did not <laughs> buy one. Yeah, that's another one for me. It's just like a big nah. It it kind of looks like a bag that Darkwing himself would make because yeah. it has his face on it. <laughs> and then they just basically change the colors, and it's now a Negaduck bag. Yes, I know a few people who got it, and they did change the materials. Apparently, Negaduck's cheeks are made of like a soft fabric material, a felt. And the actual bag itself, I think they used more of a plasticky vinyl instead of the faux leather that Mm. they had used for Darkwing. So I've heard it's a bit more durable. And they also came out with a wallet for Negaduck as well. But it wasn't very practical because 
the way they set it up, I think he had the hat was like peeking out over top the corner of the wallet. And I was looking at that. I'm like, man, I would not be able to fit that comfortably in my purse. It's well. I mean, that is kind of what he wants. He wants you to just have it hanging out of your pocket so he can just dip in there and steal it real quick. Just going around stealing all of his own branded wallets. (laughs) He would be proud. Mm -hmm. So there is that, though, if you want to check that out. That's the lounge fly bag. People apparently got it pretty fast. But yeah, it's it's like one of those mini backpacks. But I can't really justify the cost because I just I don't think I would ever wear it anywhere. So yeah, same. Next up on the venue, Disney Heroes Battle Mode, which I have been playing for three years, three, four-ish years now. It's a game on, I forget, I think it's Purblue is the company, but it's it's a, a, a cell phone mobile app. And I started playing it years ago because Darkwing is in the game. And then uh, gradually over the past couple of years, they added Megavolt and then Quackerjack. And I remember thinking, especially once they added Quacker Jack, I was like, okay, if they're willing to add Quacker Jack, who I would say is in terms of Darkwing's villains that are well known, I'd say he's kind of on the same level as Negaduck. So I'm like, if Quacker Jack is in the game, chances are eventually they'll probably put Negaduck in too. And I was just forever playing this game, waiting and waiting and waiting till the day that they would (laughs) add him. Which the game has been getting a little stale, so I was like not really checking in a whole lot. But lo and behold, that day finally arrived. They announced (laughs) him and he was released today, June 22nd. And I did go and acquire him in the game. So he is now in the game and he's looking pretty OP. I haven't really used him in battle yet, but he throws bombs uh, I did post, I think on my Twitter, I posted a video recording of some of his little animated actions. Did you see those? I did, yeah. He he got he does like a big, oh, he shoots like a la- is laser gun or something. And does he scratches his nails on a chalkboard? Is yes. that one of them too? Yes, yeah. that, one, that one's <laughs> good. They're, they're pretty on point. Um, uh, no notes. He seems like he's having a, a wonderful time. Yes, and his friendships are with Darkwing and the Horned King, because every character has what's called a friendship. It's not like an actual literal friendship, but it's just you do some dual battles with the characters, and there's little miniature storylines where they all talk to each other and stuff. So Hmm. those are his two, and I I took a peek at it today. Who's the Horned King? Um, I think he's from the Black Cauldron. Oh. Deep cut. That's like... This guy got added before. <laughs> yes. The, the movie that damn near killed Disney. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of right. characters they've added where I was like, really? This character? But hopefully we'll get the whole Fearsome Five eventually. They seem to be building up to it. It seems to be, if I look back, it's like they release one new Darkwing Duck character a year. So. Mm few more years to go so that was the other thing that i was very excited about and also not related at all to negaduck related news they announced super mario rpg is getting a remake have you you tell me you've played that right i have not (gasps) oh i know gasp my all-time favorite game of any game in the world flip the table and end the friendship now (laughs) Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo. I played that game religiously as a child. I have even replayed it. I think I played it a couple of years ago, a whole playthrough. They're doing a full remake. So I, I need you all to understand that I'm at home just like sitting here, like dying from food poisoning. And all this news is just pouring in like one day after the other of, oh, yeah, Negadex and Disney Hero Battles mode. And then it's just like friggin' Super Mario of all the things of all the games. You're laying, sliding down the couch in misery, but if occasionally, like, punching the air, like, yes! <laughs> and then today, today, we got even more news. <laughs> even more Negaduck-related news. I, I have to wonder if this was all... Do you think this was planned? Do you think they were all in on it, and they are all releasing this at the same time as, like, a, uh, 
a merchandise, like a marketing thing? I have no idea. Because the timing. It makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder if there's going to be some big announcements um, about like a reboot or something soon. Because there seems to be a heck of a lot of Darkwing stuff going on. Yeah, it is just. I don't know. Like, between all the Negaduck related merchandise that has just dropped in the last month, and then he's in Disney Hero Battle Mode, and now he's getting his own friggin' comic series. Lock up your children. Lock up your wives. <laughs> Lock up your husbands. Lock up your Negaduck wallets. He's coming. He's coming. So Dynamite Entertainment are doing a spin-off series. His own I, I I would like to say I do find it super amusing that I think this is the first time, as far as I'm aware, that a Darkwing Duck character has gotten their own spin-off. <laughs> and it's Negaduck. Yeah, he deserves it. He's earned it. So I have this here article, and it says, Disney's evil Darkwing Duck doppelganger gets his own nefarious season. Says, Dynamite Entertainment is giving Darkwing Duck's nemesis, Negaduck, his own series this fall. So that sounds like September. Uh, It says, Dynamite announced its next Disney series, Negaduck. It will be written by Jeff Parker with art from Ciro Cangelios, I think. The first issue will have many variant covers, which I, I'm and not surprised. <laughs> I am ready. I gotta say, the <laughs> one that they posted here, like the they they posted three, but the first one that they posted looks really good. Did you see that one? He's standing on the street. Yes, yes, it does look good. Trey, Trey Magnifique. <laughs> no notes, no notes. It looks great. So. I, I assume there's just going to be like 50 million Negaduck variant covers for the first one. Uh, and it says, yeah, and then it lists off some of the artists. It will follow Darkwing Duck's villainous candy-stealing doppelganger. I like how it specifically just mentions candy-stealing as if that's his yeah. his one Only defining trait. He's involved, yeah. So it continues and it says, his new venture won't be easy and not because of any heroes. This time, his fellow criminals will be standing in his way by trying to steal his spotlight and his loot. But readers shouldn't worry. Negaduck won't let that keep him down, and he has a solution. The description for the series reveals he's ready to begin a reign of crime and terror, the likes of which St. Canard has never seen. Except, dang it, all the other villains are ripping off his ideas. What's a criminal mastermind to do when the city's thick with other criminals stealing his shine? Why, take his villainy on the road, of course. So apparently... We get a Negaduck road trip. She's going on a road trip. (laughs) How Negaduck got his groove back. And I have to wonder, okay, so listeners, at this point in time, we have, you will have listened to, or we will have dropped Darkwing Duck issue number five. Um, issue six has already come out as well because we fell behind with June being a chaotic month. So Mm -hmm. we'll be talking about that next week. But Kitty, there is something in issue six that at the time when I read it made me think, okay, that's weirdly specific and random. I think it's, it was a hint or a connection to this spinoff. Oh, and I will tell you, like, you'll probably, you might pick up on it well, when we cover next week or whenever we talk about issue six. It's because, um, what's his name? I'm trying to think of a good one. Megavolt is picking up uh, Negadex dry cleaning. Yes. Why can't he pick it up himself? And by dry cleaning, I mean he just picking Negadex clothes out of the dumpster. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, uh, it's so like, it's such a, a very subtle, but I was like, this is just a weird thing that they added to the comic. And now I'm like, hmm, hmm. So hmm. we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, it sounds like he's going on a road trip. A rogue trip, even. Oh, rogue. <laughs> One of them, he seems to be out in the snow wearing boots. So maybe he goes to Canada. He's coming for you, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's going to get into some mess, I'm sure. And they did release a couple preview pages and the art looks really good. Yes, you showed me one where he is riding around with a rocket on his back (laughs) and very small goggles that do not cover his entire eyes. 
and I'm here for it. Me too. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm just reading the rest of the article. So the last thing it says is it will be released on September 13th, 2023. Okay. So we've got a couple months ahead. And we know that the other series is at least 12 issues long, the the Dynamite Darkwing oh. Ducks. So we've got another six, well, seven, if oh. we count the one that we haven't covered yet. So we've got a lot of comics to talk about in the future and a mm-hmm. lot of Negaduck. It's just basically going to be like we're going to be slammed with Darkwing and Negaduck comics. All of All of these crumbs are coming together to form a sandwich. I just... If you went, if I went back in time to, I don't know, 2010, and I told past Ange about all this stuff that had happened and all this Negaduck merchandise, past Ange would not believe me. She would just think that I'm a big filthy liar and why would you come back in time, Ange? Now I'm suspicious <laughs> and I'll have to kill you. But That's it, see? It's just, I, I just got to say, like... I, I'm actually, well, I'm not super surprised for some reason that he got his own comic series. I had a feeling, but at the same time, it's just, wow, that's a lot of Negaduck. You have manifested him and back uh, into reality. A couple people have said to me, they were like, so uh, did you manifest this, Ange? <laughs> or, you know, one of, one, of, uh, one of my friends said something like, do you have a genie? You can tell us if you do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how many fingers are left on that monkey paw? Because I feel like you may have to get your affairs in order. One more, and I will save that <laughs> for the wish that maybe I could draw a cover for this series. I would love that. You hear? You heard it here, everybody. Tell Dynamite Studios that they have their in-house Negadec expert, Ange, ready. Pencil pencil sharpened <laughs> and touching the paper to create a beautiful visage for a terrible terrible duck that would be the we dream i would sell oh, my maybe. soul to draw a cover for the negaduck comic series let's be real and that monkey paw <laughs> 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 oh so that's it that's a lot of news and it all unfolded in the span of four days. <laughs> you see? You gotta get food poisoning more <laughs> to get this is it, see? This is you sacrificing yourself for, you know, the negaduck gods. Well, I gotta say it's just funny because uh normally when I go on vacation uh, Kitty knows this, but I go up to my friend's cottage and there's no internet access. So pretty much the entire time, I'm usually up there seven days, I'm completely cut off from the outside world unless we go into town. And usually then I don't check my internet. So if I had gone, I would have come back tomorrow, not knowing anything. And I would have just been slammed with all of this news at once. And we would have lost her. She would have flatlined her. <laughs> It had to be that unfurled slowly, very slow unfurling. Yes, that veggie dip lets you react to things in real time and not just take you out in one fell swoop. What a world. What a world. So it's a very negaduck world and we're here for it. We're excited for it. I find it interesting that it is a completely different creative team than the Darkwing uh, comics. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I did do some snooping just now when you were talking about it. And this um, this writer, Jeff Parker, right? Mm-hmm. He has quite a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Resume. There we go. He's done a boatload of Batmans and uh, some Angry Birds. So he's mm-hmm. fitting just fine. <laughs> Batman and, and Angry Birds. Together. <laughs> just put them together. And he's got Negaduck. So... Oh my goodness. Oh, so good. Get your tetanus shots. Here we go. We will become exclusively a Negaduck (laughs) podcast starting in September. Um, We will create our own content until the next issue comes out, forsaking Darkwing entirely. Just kidding. Um, Also, big news, kind of, sort of, maybe a little for us. 
we have been doing this podcast for two years. Oh, that's right. Our anniversary was two days ago? Yeah, uh, June 20th, allegedly. Uh, if the courts are to be believed, we started recording this podcast. And some of you have listened to all of it and been with us this whole time. So, hey, thank you. We appreciate you. It does not feel like that long. No. That's just because I get to spend time with my friend talking about ducks. What else could be better? I haven't found anything yet, and I doubt I will. So thanks for, for sticking around with us if you have, and if you've come in late, that's okay. We'll tell the teacher to look the other way or vouch for you if the cops ask if you have an alibi. Yeah, we're, we, we've got quite a lot of this show left to watch, and they keep throwing content at us <laughs> to cover, so <laughs> we'll be here for the next eight millennia, and we look forward to having you along for the ride. And speaking of rides and angry birds, meet Batman. We're actually going to talk about Darkwing Duck today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, disregard my, my opening entirely, because as I was elated to uh, find our fate on the wheel the last time that we'll be watching Time and Punishment and uh, talking about it today, which is what we will do now. Uh, so if you would like to watch the episode time and punishment it is season one episode 52 on uh, disney plus and it says goslin pursues quacker jack and megavolt across time she Which, does i mean kind of she, she doesn't really pursue them she just gets <laughs> dragged along with them but it's fair it's fair somebody watched this episode that's for sure and this is a pretty iconic one i even in watching it i'm like oh these are all lines that I know that I like the people tend to quote. So it's a pretty, pretty good one. Very big in the genre of what if Goslin died? Yeah, it's a very big what if. And um, not super touched on how actually tragic and sad it is. <laughs> but we'll wallow in that in a bit when we get there. But fun fact, before we actually get into the episode, is on Disney Plus, this is sandwiched between Quack of Ages and Stress to Kill. And isn't Quack of Ages the first one with a time top in it? I want to say yes. And then Stress to Kill is another Megavolt and Quacker Jack episode. So, seems like a pretty good viewing trio. Not that we could do that. All I know is that Quack of Ages, a little, uh, you know... Green capture is, is King Herb and his little inky mm. maid lady, whoever she is. Binketh! <laughs> Binketh, of course. <laughs> the fool that I am. <laughs> so, we are just talking about episode 52 today, but I thought that was interesting. And this episode starts pretty typically with Darkwing, Goslin, and Launchpad driving around on the rat catcher. It seems like Goslin has held up everything with the patrolling by wanting to finish a gory zombie movie she was watching. And uh, Justice Darkwing finished saying, like, you're lucky this is a slow night. We hear the telltale zapping of our dear friend Megavolt's no good as the power lines glow. And he siphons all the power in the city to a giant top that's sitting on top of a building. Um, they're watching through binoculars as Quacker Jack <laughs> just bounces around in circles, <laughs> smiling to himself. Not a thought in his entire head as uh, they start, you know, as Darkwing clocks all the villains to the kids who hadn't watched any other episodes so that we know who they are and goslin's basically just like all right let's go kill him <laughs> <laughs> and darkwing is um it's like a uh, reality check uh no we are the crime fighters and you are the obedient daughter who stays put and out of trouble as if he has no memory of this child and Launchpad is like what reality are we checking exactly <laughs> <laughs> So it's one of those episodes, not, he doesn't get to do it too much, but Launchpad does get a good few sasses in this episode. Mm -hmm. And Goslin is just kind of like, oh, this old thing again. Darkwing is just has one of those touching moments where he's like, I don't know what it would do if anything ever happened to you. Da, da, da. Like, oh, fine. You know, oh, well, ha, 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 what foreshadowing. Goslin gives in and says, oh, okay, fine, I won't get involved. And Darkwing and Launchpad rush off to save the day, leaving Goslin to respect her father's wishes and stay out of trouble. Just kidding. She's like, I never said I wouldn't watch. Yoink and runs off after them. She is so good at exploiting those loopholes. She sure is. She is, like, 
I don't know. She'd make a good lawyer or a bad lawyer? I'm not sure. Oh, well, she winds up the same place that all lawyers wind up (laughs) in the future. (laughs) Yale. Um. (laughs) I thought you were going to say bourgeois. (laughs) Oh, bourgeois. Well, I mean, no. (laughs) Uh, they do. Uh, they. I guess that is the next logical step. They would end up in bourgeois after <laughs> they, they they rot in prison in Dark Warriors prison. Spoilers. Meanwhile, on the roof, unaware that they are being spied on by three people on street level through binoculars, somehow Megavolt informs Quacky <laughs> <laughs> that the time top is charged up and ready to go, and Quackerjack flips for joy, ending in a death drop to end all death drops. As he starts dreaming of all the wonders the future holds for them. Uh, dreaming about basal fusion yo-yos, ion spinning jump ropes, and particle beam fuzzy bears. He's so excited. He's prancing around on top of the top and hugging it. Megavolt is equally as excited to see all the technological wonders of the future, including zillion watt light bulbs with lifetime warranties and other such wonders. And um, But then he's like, oh! Being the semi-coherent scientist as he is, he uh, announces the dangers of time travel and how they could alter the course of history forever. I'm getting very dramatic and the camera keeps zooming in on his face, but then he just says, sounds like fun. Because, <laughs> you know, he's a villain and he knows what he's about and I appreciate him for that. Aslan somehow beats Darkwing to the roof and ties down the time top, hoping to buy him some time to show up before the villains get away. Darkwing is just kind of inchworming along the side of the building to make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> Making a sweet time. And when he does make his dramatic entrance, it's one of those iconic lines that I feel like if anybody knows a Darkwing intro, it's probably one of the this one. Um, so I'm Terror the Flaps in the Night. I am the batteries that are not included. Mm-hmm. And at this point, my sister, who hates, who hates to watch me prepare for this podcast because it involves pausing a 23 minute episode 8 million times to take these notes he says do you think he uses D batteries (laughs) I looked at her and she's like because he's a duck (laughs) I'm putting that in my notes right now (laughs) so courtesy of my sister so that's his entrance and as he's doing his whole dramatic entrance, like, he kind of like nose dives into the building and crashes into it and pops back out and finishes. And Quackerjack and Megavolt are already inside the time top. And Megavolt just like really snottily says, oh, like, we didn't know that. <laughs> he's basically like, let me at him. Let me out of here. I'll make him sizzle like spit on a griddle. And, uh, that's one that I hear. I feel like I hear that all the time. And uh, Quacker Jack's beautiful response is, oh, aren't we feeling folksy? (laughs) (laughs) You know, they're not, I don't remember, like, when I think about this episode, I think about them being in it a lot more than they actually are. Mm -hmm. They are in it quite a bit, but, like, the, the parts that they are in together are so beautiful that I wish there was more of it. They are a very good duo. They're so entertaining. They're... Like, the same level of crazy, but just, like, slightly malaligned so that their crazies never quite, like, beat in the middle. (sighs) It's it's a fun dynamic. So, Quacker Jack deters Megavolt from going out there and trying to kill him, saying that they could get something really nasty from the future to kill him instead. And Megavolt's like, oh, sounds like a great idea. Let's go. Darkwing, in his typical way, is wasting time narrating to himself and tiptoeing across the roof as the top starts to spin. And Goslin, who had tied the, the time top down, now like is holding onto the rope, trying to keep it in place, and gets like whipped up into the spinning of the top. And she winds up like bonking Darkwing away into like a pretzel man, because that's how things go on Darkwing Duck. Um, just before it vanishes, she gets out a, Dad, help me! And he hears her, which, you know, kind of explains the rest of the episode i don't know that he actually registers that it was something that she actually said yeah i don't know because he because he he does go gosling so maybe the head trauma caught up to her caught up to him and i don't know he was not wearing his helmet so 
The uh, time cop and his travelers seamlessly appear on the same roof, but it looks a little different. Oslin is feeling pretty sick. I'm imagining feeling a bit like uh, Ange was earlier this week. Yes. Um, that she <laughs> used to stand in line for rides like that, and um, there's not much time for her to feel lousy because Megavolt and Quacker Jack are so eager to check out the future. Uh, they burst out, and they both start heading off in the directions they want to go. Quacker Jack wanting to go to the toy shop. The Megavolt being like, no, we have to check out these nuclear fission generators. And Quacker Jack's like, oh, well, we should have a vote. And um, it goes exactly how <laughs> we all know it would. Because Quacker Jack gets to vote. Mr. Banana Brain gets to vote. And Megavolt gets to vote. And uh, <laughs> as, as they're walking away toward the toy shop, Megavolt's like, well, it's not fair. He always sides with you. <laughs> It'd be kind of funny if he sided with Megavolt at least once, and then Quacker Jack yeah. legit got mad at Mr. Banana Brain for it. <laughs> well, and then they'd be the ones not talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, they just kind of wander off. They don't even realize that they've, you know, entangled a child into their time travel. And she unties herself from the top and comments on how the city looks so cleaned up. And a, a scream issues from the street below. As a man in a business suit runs up screaming and begging for help from Megavolt and Quacker Jack as a tank rumbles down the street. Megavolt and Quacker Jack immediately abandon the man to die. They're like, oh, well, too bad for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and the tank with Darkwing's face comes to a stop. And we get our second eye on the terror, but it is slightly different, more menacing. I am the terror that hunts in the night. I am the jackal that gnaws at your bones. I'm not finished. I am Dirt Warrior Duck. Maybe a year in the pen will teach you to use a crosswalk. Jay Walker. He does that to jaywalkers? And you thought your insurance premiums were high now? What would he do to real criminals? Let's not stick around to find out, Scout! Back to the time top! Maybe Dad's just having a bad day. A really bad day. A stint in solitary ought to teach him some respect for traffic laws. But, but, but what about my right to a trial? Are you saying the jury wouldn't take my word? Uh, no, sir. Not at all, sir. Subject with bad haircut reported at corner of Lancashire and Magnolia. So, another criminal coiffure endangering the sensibilities of decent citizens. And I bet he has dandruff, too. <laughs> As, like, menacing as Dark Warrior is supposed to be, he's, you know, completely unhinged, but he is very much still Drake. They they find a way to make it. He, <laughs> this is like Drake the dweeb, given the absolute power that he had when he <laughs> was left in charge of the classroom. Yes. But with explosives. <laughs> And the clout to actually make everybody do what he wants them to do. So um, he then pops out of the tank in a seriously overdone, super evil looking costume. Probably it's more akin to like a Judge Dredd type look. Mm -hmm. But he's still got the hat. He's got these giant spikes on his shoulders that are probably (laughs) as long as his legs are. Um, And he has this like perfect triangle physique with it's like, you know, makes it look like he's all muscular and stuff. But we know that it's padding. Mm. We do eventually find out that it is just like a padded suit type thing. But it's he, he gets an impressive figure. I feel like he does kind of morph too after when we see him like out of yes. the Dark Warrior costume. That like after they draw him after that, he's kind of got his little noodly legs back. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he gets an impressive physique in, in these first few scenes. And his eyes are also glowing red. Uh, he's also wearing pants and boots. Uh, so that is our clear indication that Darkwing has been through some shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so we learn that this uh, 
This business-suited man has committed the most heinous crime of all, jaywalking, and deserves to be thrown in jail for a few months. Even Crackerjack and Megavolt, who are hiding in trash cans nearby, are concerned about what he would do to real criminals if he's going to throw a uh, jaywalker in jail. Aslan wonders if Darkwing... If Darkwing isn't just really having a really bad day. Mm. Um, and as she's wondering, she's like, oh, maybe he's having a bad day or a really bad day. As, like, reflections of laser beams are, like, <laughs> glowing on her face. So he's just, like, shooting at this jaywalker, <laughs> apparently, that he's already has apprehended. So I don't know. He's just going buck wild down there. The jaywalker is being held up by, like, a robot kind of looking thing that looks like a thunder quack or um, a flash. Well, like, I guess a thunder quash flack. Black, Flash black quack, thing. yeah. Yeah. It has, like, you know, those robot tentacly arm things. And um, he's asking about whether he'll have a trial. You know, can I have a, a trial? And Darkwing is like, what do you think that a jury wouldn't take my word for it? And uh, that's, that's basically the end of that man. That man dies. Rip. <laughs> Uh, another drone floats up and tells him about a horrible crime that's happening that it needs his attention and somebody has a bad haircut and dark warrior tanks off uh, right after this thing to, to, to return justice and goodness to the world and goslin misses her chance to get his attention and just kind of like stands in the middle of the street watching the tank roll away Megavolt and Quacker Jack, on the other other hand, are hoping it. They're trying to get <laughs> trying to get out of here, trying to get back to the time top. And they find more of the the Darkwing robot drones sizing up the top for uh, parking violations. <laughs> and it's pretty beautiful because immediately Megavolt throws Quacker Jack so far <laughs> into the bus. <laughs> He's just like he did it. He did it. He I I was only a passenger. I wasn't driving. <laughs> And uh, Quacker Jack's defense is like, I don't even have a driver's license. And then, betrayal upon betrayal, even Mr. Banana Brain chugs him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so they all get arrested. You know, Perfect. Perfect. You know, it's beautiful. Um, Goslin has decided to take matters into her own hands and is go en route to Darkwing Tower to give him a major talking to. But get up, gets up to the tower just by like walking up the support wires <laughs> of the bridge. Which is hysterical if you think about it. It's just this city is business as usual and there's just a child walking up a bridge. <laughs> like a Spider-Man in one of the many verses. But anyway, she finds the tower empty except for a launch pad who's working on a taxi cab. Although this launch pad has a streak of gray in his hair and dark eyelids and a big checkered bow tie. He's basically wearing his same outfit except for the big bow tie. And he's wearing like a little like cabbie slash chauffeur hat. Yeah. But his his shirt is covered in patches. So clearly launch pad has not been able to pay his bills or get himself any mm -hmm. new clothes. But apparently he's a taxi driver. One would think if he's repairing a taxi. We don't really know. Um, but he's just kind of like, wow, child, I haven't seen in years. You're still short. Mm -hmm. Goslin! Oh, it sure is good to see a friendly face. Whoa, DW always said junk food would stunt your growth, but I thought you'd be a little taller. Where you been all these years? I haven't been anywhere. I got stuck on Quacker Jack's time top and ended up here in the future. Uh, this is the future? Well, not for you it isn't, but for me it is. Now, what's going on around here? The city looks like it's just been washed in wax, the streets are deserted, and Dad's acting like no brain the barbarian. Boy, I slip away for a couple of decades and the whole town goes down the tubes. And how come you're not with Darkwing? Ah, oh, that's a uh, dark warrior, kiddo. And uh, well, uh, <clears throat> see, I'm uh, I'm not a sidekick anymore. Well, how come? What happened? Well, I guess you happened, or uh, didn't happen. She she just kind of demands answers, and Launchpad uh, catches her up to speed. He says that he's not a dark warrior sidekick anymore, and that after she vanished, they thought that she left because. Um, 
Darkwing wouldn't let her help them. She just ran away forever. Happened. Ran away forever. Um, we get to see a few snippets of Darkwing in the past uh, where the Liquidator is robbing a bank and Darkwing just kind of lets himself get pummeled. He's super depressed. Uh, until one day, at overlooking a playground, as I guess you do on patrol, there's a little girl who looks like Goslin, uh, getting her doll stolen from her by this super gruff-looking dog-nosed crook guy. <laughs> as one <laughs> My does. My guy needs a job. <laughs> My guy needs a job. A real job. Real bad. <laughs> it's just stealing dolls from little girls and trying to tear its head off. Um, at a local playground. But anyway, it did help Darkwing reconnect with his purpose. And uh, he he gets that doll back. And that's when he sees that the little girl he helped is not Goslin, but just a little girl who looks exactly like her, except she is a dog-nosed creature and not a little duck girl. Mm -hmm. But he has uh, now reunited with his one true calling in life and uh, just apparently becomes super efficient at it. And there's just a scene of him standing next to a um, pretty big rogue gallery of his villains. It's like Ammonia Pine and Steelbeak and the dreaded Lilliput. And they're all just kind of standing there going, Err. <laughs> and he just drops a giant anvil on them. And I hope Lilliput died. I'm not I'm not too proud to say it. I, I think they all, I, it kind of felt like they implied... He, they all died like they said he was just tougher on crime it makes it sound like it was permanent i mean he does send jay walkers and and other such people to the electric chair so i mean send little put twice <laughs> all i'm saying but darkwing didn't stop there as he interrupts a man who's about to eat a burger to warn him about the dangers of cholesterol and basically bullies him into going home and eating some vegetables and by this point his eyes are now glowing red seems to be something that happened on its own yeah. <laughs> yes maybe it was his own high cholesterol do we know do we know if high cholesterol makes your eyes glow red i think it's the abandonment i was gonna say child abandonment but it's not him abandoning a child the child abandoned him <laughs> drake abandonment yes yes so then we're back in, they we're basically caught back up to the present here um, as Launchpad is telling her all this story, all this backstory. They're standing in front of a giant statue of Dark Warrior that's just kind of in the middle of the city. And um, Launchpad tells her that he got fired because he told Darkwing that they should arrest crooks before sending them to the electric chair. And uh, Goslin's reply to this like sounds bad time to commit some crimes <laughs> <laughs> and she's like i need to get his attention and she's like i know how to do that and she just gets some red paint and starts slapping it on the face of the stark warrior statue and hey it works like a charm the uh overpowered now thunder quack fires a missile at them um and he just kind of is ready for them to explode picked back like in his chair feet up on the dash until he realizes it's Goslin that he just fired a missile at, and he zips up, lands, hops out, and shoves them out of the way before the missile even gets there. And of course, the missile hits him instead, and it cramps him into the wall before he like pushes it out. And he's like, "Oh, that really hurt!" And then it explodes because it's still Darkwing Duck. Mm -hmm. And um, he just kind of runs up to Goslin and scoops her up, kissing her face. Screaming that his little angel is back. And Launchpad, in an absolutely suicidal move, is like, what, no hugs for me? <laughs> Dark Warrior. Uh, basically just hands him his ass and is ready to throw him in the electric chair. <laughs> He's ready to murder Launchpad. <laughs> he is entirely ready to just kill this man. Goslin. In the flesh? Now what the heck is going on? My little angel is back. Oh, my... You don't know how much I've missed you. <laughs> how about a hug for your little sidekick? <laughs> oh, it's you. What's the matter? Run out of criminals to sympathize with? 
Looks like a clear case of the three Ds. Defacement, destruction, and disorderly conduct. Looks like it's the chair for you, my ex-compadre. Will you chill a sec? I was the one who did it. Nonsense. You were an innocent subverted by the wiles of a criminal mastermind. Dad, we're talking about Launchpad here. Well, oh, well, that's right. Well, <clears throat> Uh, perhaps I can be lenient this time. Boys! I'll just sentence him to life at hard labor. What? Uh, but Dad! Now we have to get you properly attired, sidekick. Oh. And uh, Drone drags Launchpad away. Darkwing is like, all right, it's time to go. You're my new sidekick. And Goslin and Darkwing are in the new evil-looking Thunderquack. Uh, I guess he finally learned to drive it himself after he fired a launch pad. And uh, they spot some people out after the super late curfew of 8 p.m. And Darkwing is just beside himself with Glee to arrest them, which he does. But not without giving them, like, false hope, hope first. Yeah. He kind of toys with them. He does. But then he, yeah, it's he's pretty cruel. Uh, and then he just winds up throwing them into jail so hard that their shoes get left on the pavement. I'm back at his new hideout? If it's even a hideout? It could just be his office? Because if he's like the dictator of this city, like we don't really know much about the hierarchy or how this city works in the future, but his face is plastered everywhere. Uh, he's probably like the hall monitor king of St. Canard, like fascist leader type he, thing he seems to run the entire place now yeah like there's nobody else like it's just people that he throws into jail and him <laughs> there's like no no mayor or anybody that makes any so it's interesting like what is what is that city actually like i guess it's kind of like the extreme opposite of the negaverse yeah pretty much yeah but anyway uh we see that he still has his scrawny little body and that this beefy frame is just armor that he's getting suited up in right now. Again, for some reason, there was no reason for, we didn't see him take it off. It's just, you know, a new one's being put on. Maybe he had to wash the blood off <clears throat> for some people who put gum on a street sign or something equally as morally corrupt. Um, and he asks Goslin how she likes her new uniform. <laughs> we pan over to Goslin. Oh, poor Goslin. And she's just coated in metal. She's like a spiked kidney bean. <laughs> she can't. She can't even put her arms down. And uh, he's like, oh, how do you feel? And she's like, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right, he's gonna need to so I'll get a tailor, so sue me. And he takes her helmet off, and she's able to, like, climb out of the whole thing through the neck hole. And she she calls him out. She calls him out on the shit. And she's like, she's like, you haven't even asked me what happened. And then she starts telling him that she time-traveled, and he's he, she's here with Mega Veil and Quacker Jack, and he's like, "Oh yes, real villains! It's been so long." Um, and then he tells his boss to find them, and they're like, "They've already been arrested." And he's like, "Shit!" He was so disappointed. He really was. He's like, "Hey, whatever, just destroy their stuff, I guess." The cousin's like, "No, that's a time machine. I can fix everything now. I can go back in time and make sure that you didn't go nuts." <laughs> and um, I mean. She probably could have kept it to herself because... Finally, a challenge! <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, sure, it's important to continue my fight against tooth decay and, and the people that tear the little tags off pillows, they always did get me. But real live supervillains launch a full-scale search for Quacker Jack and Mega... The suspects, suspects have already been incarcerated, sir. What? You caught them already? But I wanted to! Shall we destroy their vehicle, sir? Yeah, fine, sure, whatever. No! That's their time machine! This solves everything! They can take me back, so it'll be like I never left. Then you won't think I ran away and won't go nuts. Launchpad won't be in jail, and all the St. Canard will go back the way it was. Let's go! Come on, Dad! Let me get this straight. You want me to release two known criminals, give them an incredibly powerful vehicle, and let them trash history so that I, Dark Warrior Duck, will never even exist? Uh, I guess. I don't think so. 
she underestimated that he would turn on her. Yes. I mean, up until that point, he hadn't. He'd been super happy to see her. So it's a fair assessment, but he also knows that Darkwing has an ego the size of a, you know, giant statue and city dedicated to himself. So uh, Darkwing, after our commercial break, Darkwing is salivating all of the out of all of the times he could stop throughout history to uh, make everything better and is daydreaming about making basically every crime punishable by death. Uh, and then even going back to like the genesis of life itself with the primordial ooze and the mm, so funny duck thing like coming out of the ocean it kind of scares it back into the ocean the proto duck like, yeah <laughs> being like uh we're gonna have to set up some ground rules i took some kind of ancient history in high school so i knew about hammurabi's law mm -hmm. which is like the earliest laws and i just thought it was really funny that he was like coveting wives death yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the 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 code of Hammurabi is is death. So anyway, as Dark Dark Warrior is living his best life in his dreams, uh Goslin, on the other hand, has been locked into jail with Launchpad and all of the other hardened criminals, like rude supermarket clerks, cartoon producers, and Miss Mildew, who flunked Dark Warrior and penmanship. Um, Goslin agrees that she deserves this. <laughs> <laughs> um, she tries to goad all of the people in jail to like break out and calls them chicken but they only reply by clucking at her so they're content with their life uh, Quackerjack and Megavolt are also locked up in the same cell as everybody else <laughs> we just didn't comment on them until right now um, as they're all like well it's better to be in here than out there with him uh, but they're bickering with each other, but indirectly, because they're not talking to each other. So they're like venting, like they're talking to Mr. Banana Bear and being like, well, tell him I'm not speaking to him. <laughs> you know, that that Perfect. whole thing. Yes, it's beautiful. And um, Goslin is like, oh, we can, great, we can get out of here together. We have to work together. And she's like, Quackerjack, use your toy teeth to chew through these bars. And he's like, oh, my toys got taken away. And they also drained Megavolt of all his powers. But Mrs. Mildew is like, oh, well, me do. And <laughs> takes out her teeth. And then apparently everybody in this cell has fake teeth. Because Iger Jack is winding them up somehow and uses a whole bunch of these little che teeth to chew through the bars. Dental care is looking pretty grim in the future. I guess so. This is why Dark Warrior needs to arrest everybody. Even Goslin has learned her lesson and says, I need to floss more. But hey, they, they, they chewed their way out of prison. They're all busted out. And Megavolt zaps some lightning at some bots. Zaps them. Takes them out. And then threatens to charbroil Dark Warrior, who then just whips out a fire hose and douses them. <laughs> things ever change and that's basically it uh for those guys i don't even think quacker jack gets back up after that <laughs> uh goslin tries to appeal to dark warrior um she's like i know there's still a dark wing inside of you and he pulls a gun on her which i was wondering if they were gonna cut that out on <laughs> disney plus but they don't okay so it's it's cut on the tv version but they kept it in disney plus which is interesting. Um, but yeah, he, he just straight up pulls his gun on her. And it looks like the gas gun, but it has like an extra nozzle in the front. And she just sticks her finger in it. And she says, like, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of your gas gun. And he's like, gas gun? I haven't used that in years. And then like a missile comes out the front of it. And he just like shoves it in her face. All right, just hold it. This isn't you. I think that inside you're still Darkwing Duck. And you're still my dad. I'm not afraid of your old gas gun. Gas gun? I haven't used a gas gun in years. I should have recognized you as a bad egg from the start. You never cleaned your room, never helped with the dishes, never did well in school. If that isn't a list of criminal tendencies, I don't know what is. There's no reason why I shouldn't blast you into a smudge. But I... I 
just can't do it. Hey, no use taking chances. I knew you couldn't do it, Dad. I'd get going if I was you. He may be smiling now, but he won't be when he wakes up. Still scary that he considered it. Yeah, I mean, he's like, she's backed up against the wall with a gun to her face. It's pretty intense. Uh, but Launchpad saves the day by clobbering Dark Warrior. And uh, Launchpad, Quackerjack, Megavolt, and Goslin all uh, run, I guess, the time top with Goslin, uh, Quackerjack, and Megavolt piling into it. And Launchpad is like, maybe those villains should stay here. And they're like, no, 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 please, please take us back with you. And she's like, oh, well, everybody deserves the benefit of the, of the doubt. And besides, I don't know how to drive this thing. And then they time hop at home. Spin away, spin back. And of course, as soon as the top pops open, uh, and Megavolt and Quacker Jack are like, oh, we're finally back. Darkwing's there looming over them. And Quacker Jack and Megavolt just flat out faint. <laughs> <Yeah>. Traumatized. <laughs> yes, they're just like, oh. Uh, they spent five seconds in future jail, and it was too much for them. Goslin's like, Dark Warrior? Darkwing is like, typical, you're gone for five minutes and you forget my name, and starts lecturing her about how she was supposed to stay put, and now that she's grounded, and she hugs him. She's like, oh, that's the kind of punishment I can live with. And he's like, okay, and he hugs her back. The, the end. end. Kind of solidifies the fact that... Uh, Drake would go absolutely freaking crazy if he didn't have Goslin there roasting him all the time. <laughs> she is the anchor to his sanity. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to his ego, too, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, so, like, so he's just living his life assuming that she ran away. And he's like, well, now... I will punish every crime imaginable <laughs> with death. Yeah, it's, I feel like that's not an overcorrection at all. How far into the future do you think they went? She said I disappeared for a couple of decades. Okay, because I we thought... don't really know. In my head, I thought it was about 20 years. Yeah. So they were in <laughs> the distant past of... 2010 possibly <laughs> launch <laughs> long enough for launch pad to get a little bit of gray in his hair yeah yeah it wasn't a bad look for him either with his like emo eyeshadow <laughs> i'm sure it was just the wear of time but i mean other than that he looked exactly the same like i think it was during like the um darkwing was so depressed after goslin vanished thing that drake had like some weird Bill stubble oh yeah he was growing a beard because i guess they shaved their bills he was, mm. he was so de depressed <gasps> and disheveled i just thought of something what the first casualties of dark warriors reign were probably the malfoots <gasps> that's why <laughs> that's why they're not even there noise violations <laughs> Being a muddlefoot in public became punishable by death in 2009. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so how, how do you feel about the future? I think it's, it's probably one of the uh, more grim episodes, even though they managed to keep it pretty light mm -hmm. the whole way through. But even at the end there, he's just ready to whip out a gun and shoot her into a smudge like good lord yep. i mean even in the beginning when he fired the missile at her he was just content to watch himself just murder a child until he realized it was his own child and was like oh whoop 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 whoop, 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 whoop. maybe i overdid it <laughs> but it's also very um typical of drake to just kind of whitewash his memories of goslin mm -hmm. be like oh she was a perfect little angel until he finally like meets her again he's like Oh my god, I remember you now. <laughs> he lives in extremes all of the time. So it's it makes true. sense. It all checks out. It does. It does indeed. Yeah, there was nothing in this episode where I'm like, mm, that doesn't seem likely. I, it, it all seemed entirely likely. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. I did like, um, you know, the sass that he, like, you know, Goslin being like, 
like, you know, he's saying, oh, like, you've been corrupted by a criminal mastermind. And Goslin being like, it's Launchpad. And he was just like, oh, yeah, right. Like, it was just like the natural progression <laughs> of a Darkwing conversation. So he hadn't lost that sassiness, even though he did um, end that statement by sentencing, uh, you know, Launchpad to death. So, you know. As he do. Uh, but also, Launchpad, don't ask, don't ask the man for a hug. <laughs> You're not there. Don't, don't uh, run before you can walk, my, my friend. But uh, yeah, um, very good. I felt like the writing was very solid in this one. The animation was pretty great across the board. I did, again, I kind of remembered Megavolt and Quackerjack being in it more. But I think that was probably just my wishful thinking because they are such a delight to watch together. Mm -hmm. um, and they, like, their writing was perfect. They And the delivery was astounding as always just so good but and i kind of remember dark warrior having like a scary voice but he literally just has a drake voice yeah it's not different at all yeah for for as scary as he makes himself look he still has that little weedly darkwing tone to him which is nice because then otherwise he would just be negaduck exactly yeah and he's still stupid in his own ways although apparently very effective at his job mm -hmm. so you could argue too that the only thing that's holding darkwing back from achieving his greatest potential of being a psychopath is goslin so i don't know how would you rate this episode i give it a pretty solid five out of five mm -hmm. um i would have to give it a 4.9 because there was not a single model foot in it because mm. they were dead about. <laughs> I'm lighting all my candles in memory of the beautiful model foots. But I feel like we've had a long string of model foot episodes and the comics have been delivering on the model foots. <gasps> oh no, there's not going to be any model foots in the Negaduck if if he's traveling. You never know. Maybe they'll find a way to pop Herb in there. <gasps> what if he's his driver? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> You want to see the 101 deaths of her model foot and put him in a negative comic book. Oh. So, yeah, we did it. We watched it. It was a good one. It remains a good one. And it's pretty funny, too, because we, we love Darkwing Duck. But we are aware that a lot of these episodes are not very good. Mm -hmm. um, I was recently talking to a couple friends. One of my friends who listens to the podcast. Hello, Lindsay. Um... And another one who doesn't. And she's like, oh my god, I can't believe that like one of my best friends has a podcast and I haven't listened to a single episode. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's, just episode about, it's a podcast about Darkwing Duck. I was like, some of the episodes are really good. <laughs> she just started laughing. I'm like, I'm going to be completely honest. A lot of these aren't very good. Some of the episodes are very good. But yeah, I'm not talking about us. All of our episodes are magical and perfect. I'm talking about Darkwing Duck itself. This is a very good episode. This one stands up. It a uh, a lasts the test of time, if you will. It's, yeah, it is iconic. It's a very iconic episode. And man, the the um, fan fiction fodder that came from this episode, the angst, the drama, the torture, because very we get you know a very comedic little look at it, but Drake is absolutely broken. What I find interesting is that some people interpreted it as he thinks Goslin died. And I actually think it's far worse if he thinks she ran away, because at least if she died, there would be closure. If he mm -hmm. knew that she was dead and everything, I mean, it would be very upsetting for him. But, you know, she's dead. Like, he, he knows where she's at. The idea that she ran away and is just somewhere out in the world and chooses not to be around him and chooses not to be in contact with him as far as he's concerned, I think would do far more damage on his psyche. It, it is a prolonged rejection. Exactly. Yeah. Every day it's like she ran away and hasn't come back and will never come back. And it kind of twists him into this, you know pseudo negaduck missile crazed authoritarian person who wants who just makes everything punishable by death it's just so, <laughs> it's just so extreme but 
and it's great and it's it's delightful too that just megavolt and quacker jack are just terrified out of their minds of him yeah they were a good choice for the villains for this episode they they were because they and you know what too they didn't do a damn thing they didn't do anything but they did their <laughs> they did their job well they were there to be comedic relief and they were there to get goslin into the future and then back again and they did that and it was great they didn't do a single crime in this episode i guess uh, unless you count like blacking out the city in the beginning uh and then a parking violation on a roof quacker jack apparently built his own time top like he can build a time machine somehow well i guess it's probably powered by nostalgia for all those toys from your childhood isn't it like looking into a time machine when you look back at all the toys you used to have. Farm remembers. Remember that Stretch Armstrong dog you were showing me? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, put it back. Put it back in the past. <laughs> all right, well, let's move. We're, 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 we're never thinking about the past again. We're moving on to the future. The future, which will be a, uh, a new comic book episode next week. But I am also going to spin this wheel right now and see if the fates smile upon us. We'll see if it's another Negaduck episode to keep your streak going and of your Negaduck boons this week you ready yeah i'm ready freddy here we go it is easy come easy grows do you remember that's the that one, one? That you keep telling me about that i would like no that's a star is scorned oh no i don't remember this one i'm assuming it's a bushroot one there's a money tree no bushroot bushroot's in it but there's a money oh, tree. okay no i don't remember this one is this from the the episodes i don't remember no that's, I don't know. This could be, I don't know. Obviously, it, it belongs in that category if it wasn't originally in that one. But yeah, yeah it's not a negative one. So I'm sorry, we broke your streak. We could have just watched Malice's Restaurant and been done with it. But we'll save that for another time. And uh, so next week, we will discuss uh, the comic with the mysterious segue that Ange dropped earlier, leading to... Uh, Hints of a Negaduck spinoff, which we now know is happening. And then after that, we will discuss Easy Come, Easy Grows with the money tree uh, that I absolutely remember. And until then, everyone just remember that time and crime doesn't sleep. And neither do we. Don't eat veggie dip that's been in the fridge for over three weeks, especially if it's mayonnaise based. Unless you want some fresh Negaduck content. In <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Yeah.